Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week, I'm going to show you more on how to integrate Wave Super Rack Performer with the Behringer Wing, but this time we're going to add in a virtual sound check and multi-track recording. Oh, yeah. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the channel. About a year ago, uh, we did a video on how to set up Wave Super Rack Performer to work with the Behringer Wing. And uh, since that time, I have been using it a lot. It's a great way to make the wing, which is already very powerful on its own, that much more powerful with dynamic EQ and a little bit better pitch correction or really anything else you want to do, but that's what I like to use. Um, but one thing that I didn't cover in that video that has been something I've been using a lot lately is um, also utilizing the built-in dual SD card slot recorder that is in the wing so we can have virtual sound check and multi-track recording. Uh, the only problem with using the laptop by itself is that uh, you can't really record onto it the way we have our vocal channel set up. Again, watch the other video to explain that a little bit further. Um, and if you wanted to route that audio from a recording device in the computer back through waves, it becomes very difficult. There are ways to do it, but there is more work than it's worth. Viewing it this way is much, much better. So what I'm gonna show you today is how to set that up. We're gonna recap a couple of things on the wing side from that last video. Um, you can watch the other video for more on how the wave side of things works. Um, but we're gonna set up the ability to record. We're gonna set up different control for the vocal channels versus the non-vocal channels. And we're gonna have two snapshots that can switch us back and forth from a live mode uh, coming from the stage and a virtual sound check mode coming from the SD card. So let's hop right in. Um, real quick, this is a uh, diagram of basically what we're going to do today just to help you visualize it a little bit more because I'm going to be hopping around the menus quite a bit. Um, basically, on the left here, we have two types of inputs. Uh, we have our vocal inputs and our non-vocal inputs. Um, the reason why you want to use vocal inputs differently is because of the nature of how it reverberates in your head when you use in-ear monitors. You don't want the musicians, uh, or the vocalists in particular, to hear some of the waves processing, especially when it comes to pitch correction. Um, so what we're doing is the um, vo uh, non-vocal channels are going straight via USB into our Waves laptop, um, the Waves does its magic, uh, and then it comes back via USB into the top of the channel strip. Uh, the vocal inputs are going to do something similar, but they're going to go through our channel strip like normal, and then the first insert slot, the one that's before the fader, is going to be what goes into our Waves channels, and then they'll do their magic, and they'll come back in through that insert slot. What the band is hearing, because of the way we have our tap point set up, uh, and again, you can see that in the other video, is everything up until uh, the insert slot. So they'll hear our gain, uh, gate, EQ, and compression, but anything after that, the waves processing, the other insert slot, um, the uh, fader, none of that will affect their ears. But the non-vocal channels, they'll hear everything. So this gives us the ability to run up to 48 inputs in and out of waves um, as long as we only have a few of those being vocal channels. So for today, we have four vocal channels. They happen to be plugged into our stage box on 11, 12, 13, and 14. You'll hear me repeat that as we get going here. So let's hop right in. We've got the board set up on here. Um, I'm gonna start by going to my setup menu, audio, and then you get the screen here. Now the way we have this set is all of our main input channels are what's coming from the stage. Our alt input channels are going to be what's coming from the Waves computer. Again, you can see how to do that in the other video. But one thing I'm gonna to do to make my life a little bit easier is I'm going to click on this channel count here and we're going to set certain channels, our vocal channels mostly, to not switch over 
um, whenever we go from main to alt. So for me, that's 33 through 37 are my four vocal channels and then the mic you're hearing me on right now. Um, I'm also going to do auxes four through eight because those are my effects returns and talk back and that kind of thing. So when I close this and switch to alt, you can see those channels I just selected are not switching over. You're still hearing my microphone um, because that's the way I have it set up on here. Cool. So now we have that. Let's go to our effects page. And I'm going to be setting up, uh, this is just by chance, but also racks 11 through 14 are going to be my four vocal channel um, effects uh, sends. So we're going to click on that. And up here where it says external, that's what we're going to use because we're sending it outside the board to waves um, for those four channels. So we're going to do that four times. Cool. Let's go ahead and route those vocal channels. So here's vocal one. I'm going to go to the first insert slot, the one that is right after our tap point and before our fader. Um, and we are going to turn that on and select, in this case, number 11 and mono. Vocal two on, number 12, mono. Three on, number 13, mono. Four on number 14 mono. And we'll come back and set the returns in just a moment. So moving forward, we're going to go to our routing page. Um, we're going to look at our outputs and our output group. We're going to start with USB audio. So this is what we're sending to my Waves computer. Um, speaking of which, uh, so I have... Uh, vocal 2, I'm going to switch that on from time to time. My vocal mic is going through that. Uh, I wouldn't do this live, but I have a flanger on there so you can hear when I'm actually using um, the waves processing. So just so you're aware of that. So going to that computer, I'm going to hit this plus 1 auto. And we are going to start with our source group is going to be AS50A. In my particular example, I have two Behringer S16s on stage. Those are my 32 inputs. And then we have um, eight uh, uh, XLR inputs locally on the back of the board. And we also have four aux inputs um, on the back of the board. So in that order, we're going to start with 1 through 32. It's going to be AS50A, 1 through 32. So I'm just going to... Real quick, tap through all of these. Then we're going to switch over to our local inputs, one through eight. And then we'll also do some of our aux inputs. Okay, so that's what's going to our Waves computer. Uh, Let's go ahead and change our vocals. We don't want them to send directly from the snake into the waves processing. Remember, we want that to come from our effects send. So for vocals one through four, we're going to go to our source group and change that to effects send 11, 12, 13, and 14. Um, and it shouldn't matter, but I'm just using the left channel on each of those um, because we're sending mono. All right, so we're going to now go to our output group and switch over to the WLive Record. This is what's going to our SD cards. Uh, and we're going to do the exact same thing just without that last step in there. So for 1 through 32, our source group is going to be uh, AS50A, 1 through 32. There we go. Then local inputs, one through eight. And aux inputs, one through four. So everything that we're utilizing is recording. It's also sending through USB um, with those four channels being a little bit separate on that. All right. Um, Let's now go back to our vocal channels and make sure that our returns are set up properly on that. So uh, again, my insert point, and you can see it's now telling me that it's sending through USB 11. It's saying that information we did earlier. We just need to set up the return channels. So on this first one, I'm gonna click on return. It needs to be USB audio, and this is gonna be USB 11. The next one will be 12, 13, 14. 
All right, and so now we have our entire live setup ready to go. Um, if I switch on my vocal two, you can hear my flanger is on. i turn that off because it's annoying. <laughs> um, so we hear the audio is going to and back through our setup on here. Um, and uh, that's great. So now we need to set up two snapshots, the two snapshots, um, so that we have a live and a virtual sound check mode. So we're gonna go to the library, we're going to do save plus scope. So that way we're saving uh, not everything. We're going to save specific things. So we're going to hit none. And then we're going to go output USB. So what is going to our Waves computer is what's going to switch. So we're going to hit all, close. The only other thing we want to do is those vocal channels, 33 through 36. And over here in the content section, all I want them to save is going to be the connection. So my input that I'm selecting. So now that's done, we're going to hit save, give it a name. I'm going to call it exclamation mark live. Save. I'm going to select it again, save plus scope. And the reason why I'm doing this is because now I know that the same things are selected. We're going to hit save again, and we're going to call this one vert for my virtual sound check mode and save. And we'll come back and overwrite that um, once we've set up for our virtual sound check. So we're gonna go back to routing and we're gonna change what's going to our USB audio. So output group, USB audio, and instead of it being um, our connections from the board and our effects sends, it's going to be our uh, recorded SD card outputs and our effect sends. So I'm going to skip over the effect sends when I get there, but everything else, we're gonna do source group, uh, the W Live play card, and start patching those in. When I get to, in this case, 11 through 14, I'm gonna skip over those and keep going. All right, so now what's going to um, our waves is from um, the SD card, not from our inputs on stage. Uh, we're gonna go back to vocal one through four and our input, we're gonna change those. Again, right now it's listening to what's coming from stage. So instead of A11, we're gonna change this to uh, our W Live card, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, and then library, we're gonna save over this virtual mode. So we're gonna go save plus scope. You can see the right things are selected on here. Save, save, confirm. So right now we are in virtual soundcheck mode. If I had something recorded and played it, you would hear it coming through. Um, so I'm going to switch back to live mode for a second by going load partial or partial load. Again, you see the same information is on here, load. And now we are back to our live mode. So if I unmute my vocal two, you can hear it coming through the flanger. If I go to my virtual mode and partial load, you don't hear it anymore because it's listening to the recording, but currently nothing is recorded. So let's go back to live. We're going to record by clicking up here on our SD card uh, slot. I have those linked together and we can record. Um, so let's go back to that. So library live partial load all right so we're back in live mode you can hear me coming through the flanger we're going to go up to the sd card and hit record and hey hey welcome to another tech tuesday this is chad from ascension worship hey 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 one two one two and stop all right let's go back to our uh virtual mode and you don't hear me anymore because we're listening to the recording. The recording is not currently playing. But if I go back to the SD card and hit play. And hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. Hey, 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 one, two, one, two, and stop. There you have it. So we now have a live mode. And a virtual sound check mode. Let me turn that off because it's annoying. 
And that's how you set it up. And that will work for you. Um, you can make your changes in virtual sound check mode, get your band all dialed in. And then whenever you're ready, switch back to live and then save over your actual scene. In this case, I have it labeled example. And, uh, and that's what's going to work for you. So I hope that was helpful to someone out there. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I hope this has been helpful. Until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.